What are the best global funds? The selection criteria for inclusion is the five year growth and then also low volatility over the last 12 months. So to do some selection, I have used the Hargreaves Lansdowne website, used their fund finder, just selected the global category. There's 465 results. I've excluded things like sustainable energy that are more of a global sector than a, the wider global theme. I've also excluded those that have had a bit of a bumpy ride like Bailey Gifford Positive Change, which did well during the recent tech boom and since then have gone a bit off the boil. So carry on watching and you'll find out some interesting funds. First one up is Fundsmith Sustainable. This is preferable over Fundsmith for me because it's a bit more of a nimble fund and being a newer fund, I feel that it hasn't got some of the maybe stodge that's still in Fundsmith. It is very concentrated, particularly in terms of sectors where it's got healthcare at a third, consumer staples 30%, technology 18%. Also very concentrated on the geography sector as well with only five countries represented. Um, some good companies here, not too high weightings at the top, which I like to see. Johnson & Johnson I really like, Microsoft I like, Procter & Gamble. So it seems good, but then when you look at the performance, it's decidedly average. And over three years, it's actually worse than average for the IA global sector. So that makes me think that outperformance isn't easy. And what am I paying the extra money for? And so outperformance is elusive because, well, it's really that there isn't one factor or there isn't one thing that really dominates. So in 2022, it wasn't value that was a dominant theme. It was energy. And a lot of these global funds weren't really in energy at all. And the quality factor can do well, but it can become overpriced. And then all these funds are stuck in growth companies where maybe the growth is slowing or the PE ratios have just got too high. So here's another interesting global fund, BNY Mellon Global Leaders, uh, in the top quartile over five years. It's got quite strong uh, US equities. France number two, a little bit strange. And the top 10 here is quite different to a global tracker, which is maybe kind of a good thing because that's what you want if you're actually paying someone to go around selecting things. Um, over three years, it's pretty much identical to the IA global average. So you have to wonder again, well, yeah, what am I really paying the money for? And if this is one of the better funds, then um, I'd hate to see some of the worst funds. Next up, one of our favorites, the LNG Global 100. The top 100 companies that have a truly global footprint in terms of where they're earning their money and also where their assets are located. There are a few companies that are excluded that I find a little bit odd, um, but, but there you go. But it's got a very strong weighting towards Apple and Microsoft, and this does put some people off. Information technology right up there, 29%. A good performance over five years and three years. One year, yeah, pretty good, and it's been actually quite stable not as volatile as the IA global sector. Um, now, if you want, kind of like that, but think, well, there's too much Apple and Microsoft, then you can dilute it through the HSBC Islamic Global Equity Index. It's more expensive than the LNG Global 100, but you've got 129 holdings, so quite similar to the Global 100. There's no banks in it, hooray! No banking crisis can impact me. Uh, there's no holdings above 10% as well here, so that's not so bad. Uh, performance over five years is very good, but the shorter term, not quite so good. Um, but then who knows going forwards, because the past doesn't always just keep replicating for us. So this might be something that's worthwhile looking into a little bit further. Next up, we've got M&G Global Sustained Paris Align. So this is another sustainability ESG fund. Uh, it's done very well. Top quartile here. Uh, US number one, UK number two. Interesting. Um, 
Microsoft, yeah, like that, Novo Nordisk, United Health, very common fun, uh, companies to see in the top 10. But WH Smith at number five, I mean, that's just really odd. It's just really <laughs> crazy. <laughs> but well, there you go. Next up, we've got this one is an amazing fund. It's featured before on this channel and it's the Royal London Global Equity Select. It's by far and away the best performer. It's got just wonderful performance across all time frames. Um, got some decent holdings here. Again, slightly different with things like Reliance Steel and Steel Dynamics, but I think that's really helped it recently. Having these uh, companies that are in slightly different sectors, slightly different stages of development. So the target of the fund is to outperform the MSCI World Index by 2.5% per annum over rolling three year periods. And that's exactly what it's done recently. Um, here are the holdings in a lot more detail, all of them. You might want to pause the video and have a look. I'm not really going to go into it too much, but generally some pretty good companies here. I mean, I suppose not all of them I've heard of, but um, they do all look fairly decent. So the strategy of the fund is that it aims to deliver long term capital growth by investing in a concentrated portfolio of between 25 and 45 stocks. And these companies can come from developed markets or emerging markets, any sector, any capitalization. And they seek to diversify across the whole life cycle of companies, which they defined as five stages, accelerating, compounding, slowing and maturing, mature and turnaround. So by having this blend, that's how you get the amazing sharp ratio, the good performance and the lower volatility. But watch out because there's a catch. So it does a bottom up investment process. But the problem is they're saying that um, assets under management are now approaching a level where the strategy is reaching capacity, which is odd because it's not that large a fund. Further growth could impact the investments team's ability to meet the long term objectives of the fund. So what they're going to do is they're going to restrict issuance of shares uh, after 60 days notice when the fund's NAV reaches 900 million and the size of the fund is around about 780 million, at which point investors will not be able to buy additional shares. So watch out, uh, have a check on what's going on with the fund, research in a bit more depth, see if it meets your criteria. But I really like it, although that's just an opinion it's not advice so i hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe to the channel there's loads of great videos on helping you find good funds and retire early give the video a like and I'll see you soon